Hello, my name is Ryan Page and I'm an application specialist for Tecla Structures. Today in this video we're going to be discussing phases and phase management, specifically how they can help you manage your model objects. Topics in this video are going to include an introduction to phases and the phase manager, we'll discuss the basic workflows for utilizing phases, we'll talk about some tips and tricks for working with phases, and lastly we'll discuss the phase creator, which is an extension from the Tecla Warehouse. In Tecla structures, phases refer to an identifier to indicate a portion or section of a project. Phases consist of several elements, such as a number, a name, comment, and more. Phases can represent various breakdowns or sections of a project. For example, phases can represent separate buildings or elevations within a single building, different systems, areas, phases, or even element types. Phases are flexible and can be applied in a variety of ways to help users group and organize their model objects. Phases can be utilized in various other aspects of Tecla, such as filtering, reporting, the organizer, and drawings. Phases are utilized through the Phase Manager, which can be found on the Manage ribbon. The Phase Manager allows users to add, remove, or edit properties of a phase, as well as assign objects to a phase, select objects associated with a specific phase, and even lock and unlock objects on a specific phase from being edited. It's important to note that only one object can be assigned to one phase at a time. Now every model, unless you're using a custom template created by yourself, only has phase 1, in which all objects are placed on, unless otherwise specified by you, the user. Let's use our current model to help demonstrate how phases could be used. Ensure the Phase Manager is open. You can find it on the Manage ribbon under Phase or open it directly by using the keyboard shortcut Control H. As we can see, we only have one phase, Phase 1. We will need to define a few more phases to break up our project. Let's go ahead and hit the Add button on the right hand side six times to create a total of seven phases. You'll notice how the phases are created in sequential order from the last existing phase. Now from here, we could go ahead and select some objects, and such as our second building to the right, and then select Phase 2 in the Phase Manager, and hit the button Modify Phase on the right hand side. Now the objects on each phase can be selected independently by selecting the phase in the Phase Manager and then choosing Objects by Phase. If we use the button Phases by Objects, this will allow you to select an object in the model, Click this button and then the phase will be highlighted in the Phase Manager. This will help you identify the current phase of an object. As stated before, you can lock and unlock phases, and the objects on those phases cannot be modified or deleted until unlocked, so it's an excellent way to secure your work once it's complete. From here, we could place Building 1 on Phase 1 and Building 2 on Phase 2, and so on. But our phase list is a bit straightforward and doesn't really allow for any flexibility for any project changes or growth in scope. One best practice is to predetermine a group of phases and associate them to a section of the model. Let's take building one for example on the left hand side. If we wanted to break down the interior walls versus the exterior, we could not place them all on one phase, as that would provide difficulty in separating them out for reports and drawings. Instead, we can designate a range of phases to Building 1. It gives us a lot of flexibility. So let's say that Building 1 is represented by phase 100 through 199. This is probably more phases than we need, but it allows us the flexibility, and we don't have to worry about our phases getting out of order or disorganized. Let's say that phase 100 can be exterior walls, and then 101 uh, can be for interior walls, and so on. We can do the same for building 2 with the 200 series, and a pattern starts to emerge. We can use these phases to break down not just the interior and exterior, but different elevations or Ys of our structure. So let's do that and use the 100 series of numbers for building 1 and 200 for building 2. And let's also say you will use phase 300 for our curved wall that's all by itself to the right of building 2. It's important to note that you cannot rename, renumber, or delete a phase that has objects on it. 
If you need to do so, you'll have to move the objects to another phase first. The first step to, is to put all the phases back on phase 1. And in fact, we can keep phase 1 as our general purpose phase. Next, let's change the numbers of our phases to 100, 101, 200, 201, 202, and 300. Also, let's populate the phase names and comments to reflect the associated building and grouping. Now, we can select the objects and modify the appropriate phase. There are some best practices for assigning phases after objects are created. The first would be to select what is easiest and assign it to a phase first, effectively leaving the harder to select objects for last. You may even find they are the only ones remaining on your original phase and can utilize the phase manager itself to select and move them to their appropriate phase. Another tip is that on occasion you will assign objects and they seem to be on two different phases, like our curved wall. This is the result of the component being on one phase and the objects being on the original phase. Now this doesn't always happen, but it does occasionally. It's easy enough to fix. Just change your selection type to select objects in components, and then select the objects and reassign them to the correct phase. By doing so, the objects and the component are now correctly placed on the correct phase. Although we are assigning phases after we created our objects, which is a perfectly valid approach, we can also do this as we model. Notice the at character under the current header in the phase manager. This represents which phase is currently active. For us, this whole time it has been phase one. However, we can make any phase active by choosing a phase and clicking the set current button or simply double clicking on the phase. Then any objects created will default to the current phase. Using this can save time, but it is a bit of a preference. Just make sure to be on top of which phase is current. Otherwise, you may end up reassigning objects later as one or more were modeled under the incorrect current phase. Now that we have our objects assigned as shown, we can much more easily select them. This will give us an advantage in filtering and can help considerably when creating drawings or using reports or the organizer. There's one last point on the topics of phases that we should cover. As you've seen, creating phases, depending on how many you need, can take a bit of time. If you find yourself using many phases in every project, you can reduce the setup time of creating these phases in each model. There is an extension found on the Tecla warehouse called Phase Creator. Once downloaded and installed, the Phase Creator allows users to establish a text file with a predetermined set of phases and then import them into any new or existing model. You can first create the phase list in Excel and then save it to a comma delimited text file in your firm folder. Then every new model, navigate to that file and import the phases when needed. Keep in mind that any duplicate phases will be ignored during importation. It's a simple but excellent tool that can eliminate a tedious task. Make sure you take the time to think out a standard list or even a few different lists of phases so you can have them ready to go. This concludes our video. Thank you for watching. For more information on the topics discussed in this video or for other topics, make sure to visit our Tecla User Assistance webpage for product guides, support articles, tutorials, and more.